So pertaining to the actions of the shooter, at 2.01 a.m., the shooter entered Paul's nightclub. He was armed with two firearms. One was an assault rifle, and one was a 9-millimeter handgun. We know that as soon as he entered the club, he made a right-hand turn, and he walked through the main areas where the dancing was taking place of the club. When he was walking through, he was firing both weapons. He fired approximately and a minimum of 186 times from his assault rifle. He also fired a minimum of 22 times from his 9mm handgun. We know that as he walked the main areas of the dance floor, that he looped around and he came back towards this area of the club. And something significant happened at that point. What happened was that his assault rifle jammed. We know that his assault rifle jammed because there was a spent shell casing that was jammed in the weapon and it required law enforcement to use a dowel in order to unjam it after they recovered his firearm. And that's significant because I believe that actually saved lives. He then continued on to the club into this area here, which is a small corridor where the only areas you can go is to the north or the south bathroom. He then entered the south bathroom and he fired his 9mm handgun. He then went to the north bathroom and continued to fire his handgun. He then went back to the south bathroom and he took his handgun and he fired over the bathroom stalls and under the bathroom stalls, shooting the people who were trying to get safety there. He then went back to the north bathroom and he remained there for approximately three hours. During this period of three hours, he did not, fi he did not fire an additional round. What he did do is he called 911 five times. He mentioned during the calls that he had explosives in the parking lot. He also was on his phone and he was Googling how to spell the word allegiance. And he also tried to research how to unjam his firearm. Again, we know that he was not successful in figuring that out. Approximately three hours later, around 5.13 in the morning, he fires his handgun again. The evidence supports that what he did is he went and he was still in the north bathroom. He opened a stall door and he fi fired approximately three to five rounds. Now the evidence supports that when he fired those rounds, he fired into people who were unfortunately already deceased. At that point, he then came out of the north bathroom and there was a hole that was created by law enforcement that I'll talk about in a little bit. And he again took his nine millimeter firearm and fired a minimum of two shots. One shot hit an officer in the helmet and another shot hit a survivor who had just been rescued from the south bathroom and was running this way. And it struck him in the back of his right calf. At that point, law enforcement returned fire and he was eventually killed and pronounced dead at the scene. Those are the facts pertaining to the shooter.